to the read aloud of the miraculous journey of Edward Tulane. In our last chapter, chapter 11, we saw uh, that Edward was stuck at the dump and he had just been uh, uncovered from the garbage at the dump. Here we are, chapter 12. Edward did not have much time to savor the light, for the dog suddenly appeared above him, dark and shaggy, blocking his view. Edward was pulled out of the garbage by his ears, dropped, and then picked up again, this time around the middle, and then shaken back and forth with a great deal of ferocity. The little dog growled deep in its throat, and then dropped Edward again and looked him in the eye. Edward stared back. "'Hey, you, get out of here, you dog!' It was Ernest, king of garbages, and therefore king of the world. The dog grabbed Edward by his pink dress and took off running. That's mine, that's mine, all garbages is mine, Ernest shouted. You come back here. But the little dog did not stop. The sun was shining and Edward felt exhilarated. Who, having known him before, would have thought that he would be so Happy now, crusted over with garbage, wearing a dress, held in the slobbery mouth of a dog, and being chased by a madman. But he was happy. Yeah, the author's kind of pointing out here how much Edward has changed since the beginning of our story. He was a character who was very concerned with his clothes and not much else, and very easily annoyed um, by people touching him or hugging him or doing anything to him besides putting nice clothes on him. Now he's happy, even though he's got garbage all over him. He's wearing a dress and he's being run around with by a dog and being chased by a man, but he's happy. Uh, but he was happy. The dog ran and ran until they reached the railroad track. They crossed over the tracks and there underneath a scraggly tree and a circle of bushes, Edward was dropped in front of a large pair of feet. The dog began to bark. Edward looked up and saw that the feet were attached to an enormous man with a long, dark beard. What's this, Lucy? said the man. He bent and picked up Edward. He held him firmly around the middle. Lucy, said the man. I know how much you enjoy rabbit pie. Lucy barked. Yes, yes, I know. Rabbit pie is a true delight, one of the pleasures of our existence. Lucy let out a hopeful yip. And what we have here, what you have so graciously delivered to me, is definitely a rabbit. But the best chef in the world would be hard-pressed to make him into a pie. Lucy growled. Grrr. This rabbit is made of china, girl. The man held Edward closer to him. They looked each other in the eye. You're made of china, aren't you, Malone? He gave Edward a playful shake. You are some child's toy, am I right? And you have been separated somehow from the child who loves you. Edward felt again the sharp pain in his chest. He thought of, of Abilene. He thought he saw the path leading up the house on Egypt Street. He saw the dusk descending and Abilene running toward him. Yes, Abilene had loved him. So, Malone, said the man. He cleared his throat. You are lost. That is my guess. Lucy and I are lost too. At the sound of her name, Lucy let out another yip. Perhaps, said the man, you would like to be lost with us. I have found it much more agreeable to be lost in the company of others. My name is Bull. Lucy, as you may have surmised, is my dog. Would you care to join us? Bull waited for a moment, staring at Edward, and then with his hand still firmly around Edward's waist, the man reached one enormous finger up and touched Edward's head from behind. He pushed it so it looked as if Edward were nodding his head in agreement. Look, Lucy, he's saying yes, said Bull. Malone has agreed to travel with us. Isn't that swell? Lucy danced around Bull's feet, wagging her tail and barking. And so it was that Edward took the road with the hobo and his dog. I wonder why he's chosen Malone as a name for Edward. That's an interesting name. Um, it's, so we have a character named Bull and his dog Lucy, and the text calls him a hobo. Hobo is the name for someone who wanders from place to place um, and doesn't have a home or a house that they live in. They just live on the road. So I'm interested to see where Edward will end up next with Lucy and Bull on the road.